The leak of over 1 billion people's data from the Shanghai Police Database has shocked the global cybersecurity community. In this episode, we'll examine the serious consequences of this incident and who is capable of an act of such magnitude. Imagine for a second what governments or organizations would benefit from having available the personal information of 1 billion Chinese. A senior Chinese scholar, Yi Fuxian, from the University of Wisconsin, downloaded a sample of 250,000 individuals' private data from the leak. He found information related to his home province of Hunan. He said, The data contains information on almost every county in China, and I even found data related to a remote county in Tibet, which has only a few thousand residents. He tweeted, I got the data by age and gender and am doing a detailed analysis. The severity of China's demographic crisis is beyond everyone's imagination. Yi used to be a doctor of medicine at a Chinese university and has long studied China's demographic problems. Through data analysis, he was the first to set off a trend of reflection on the Chinese Communist Party's one-child policy in both domestic and overseas online Chinese media. With a comprehensive data set of 250,000 people, Yi's research on China's population is now substantiated with solid proof. So, what will the world see when the personal data of 1 billion Chinese people are fully exposed? The more data, the more comprehensive, and the smaller the margin of error. The strategic information that can be drawn from such data includes, for example, the demographic trend, the peak of aging, and when the pension gap will arrive. Property ownership ratio in big cities can be projected based on the address and population information, such as how many properties are actually vacant. Also, from the personal income of the residents, one can get a glimpse of the overall economy of China. Based on the information of the transient population, the economic and employment situation of a given place can be extrapolated. We can also see the actual public security conditions based on the information of reported crimes at police stations. So, can we see the actual severity of the COVID-19 outbreak in China based on the medical visits, death population, etc.? Significant intelligence can be gathered from this data leak. China, under communist rule, is arguably one of the most non-transparent countries, and the credibility of official figures has long been questioned. The leaked data will reveal the darkest side of China, providing the world with a clearer picture than ever before. But who is the most hurt? It'll be the one billion Chinese people who, once exposed, are like transparent people to all sorts of entities. Their lives will be interfered with in one way or another by some yet unknown sources. Some argue that a billion is just an exaggerated peddling technique by hackers, and that it's hard to imagine that the number could be as high as a billion. So, let's review the general course of events and some of the details of the incident, and then make a judgment. On June 30th, 2022, a hacker or group with the handle China Dan published a post on the hacker site Breach Forums offering to sell 23.88 terabytes of data for 10 bitcoins. Hacker China Dan spelled out the full name of the leaked database and said it was from the Ali Cloud cloud server of Shanghai Public Security System in Alibaba Group. The data size is very large, involving 1 billion residents in China and billions of police records. On July 2nd, the same information appeared in a Telegram group. The leaked information was categorized as personal data which included the name, gender, age, birth address, ID card, photo, address, cell phone number, etc. of Chinese citizens and contained data from many provinces and cities throughout China. Billions of pieces of police data, including the time of reporting, the phone number of the person reporting the crime, the description of the incident by the person reporting the crime, and whether there was an offense of subversion of the state charged, etc. was included. The time span of the police records range from 10 to 16 years. To prove the credibility of this data, the hacker released a sample of 750,000 records. Several media outlets tried to contact the hacker but were unsuccessful. Alibaba Group declined to comment on the matter. Alibaba is the first technology provider to enter the cloud computing sector in China and is the largest cloud provider in the country. Some analysts say that if this rumor is eventually confirmed, it would be the world's largest data breach ever. A researcher at cybersecurity in the U.S. told CNN that he was made aware of the database in January on a public site, 
which was opened in April 2021, meaning anyone could have accessed the database since then. That is to say, these documents have probably been sitting online for more than a year. It was only at the end of June 2022 that the hacker began to attempt to sell the data, prompting global public attention. There has been a short-lived uproar on China's social media platforms such as Weibo and Zhihu. People were discussing the incident and alerting others by saying, There may be widespread telecom fraud in the coming period. Please take it seriously and take precautions. Sensitive terms such as data leak, Shanghai National Security Database leak, and 1 billion citizen records leak garnered millions of views and comments. However, on the afternoon of July 3rd, reports concerning the hack were blocked. When searching for keywords such as 1 billion data leak and 1 billion people's personal information, one can still see links to related reports published by Chinese media, but these links are no longer valid. The fact that some international mainstream media outlets have followed up on this news and have attempted to contact the leaked individuals directly have added credibility to this story. For example, the Wall Street Journal has verified with some of the victims that the personal information was indeed theirs. The Wall Street Journal has also inquired with the Shanghai Police, the Shanghai Municipal Party Committee's Foreign Propaganda Office, and the Chinese Internet Regulator, and has yet to receive a response. One reason the leak may contain so much information is that the Shanghai police have access to a nationwide data-sharing system that provides information far beyond the reach of regional police authorities. The CCP is far ahead of the curve in terms of collecting private info on its citizens. For years, Chinese authorities have become extremely adept at collecting digital and biological information about people's daily activities and social relationships. They analyze posts on social media, collect biometric data, track cell phones, videotape with police cameras, and sift through the information they obtain to find patterns and anomalies. It is also true that the CCP has been less than successful in securing such data, and there have been a few leaks, but on a very small scale in comparison. Moreover, the breach isn't seen by many experts as a serious hacking effort. A Bloomberg op-ed on July 5th said the leak was probably caused by sloppy, improper operations within the CCP's Public Security Bureau, not by a hacking attack. What is most puzzling in this case is the price asked for by the hacker or the hacking organization. To obtain all the data, it costs only 10 bitcoins, or about 202,000 US dollars. The price is so low that it isn't even enough to afford a decent flat in Shanghai. This raises the suspicion that the hacker or the organization is only asking for money as a cover and that it has a much bigger goal in mind, especially when this information has been online for over a year. But all of a sudden, the hacker is selling it with such bravado. So it seems the intention is to attract worldwide attention rather than to profit from it. In June 2021, the Xi Jinping government introduced the data security law, which tightens regulation of domestic and foreign corporate data in important areas, while requiring companies to immediately report to Beijing when they discover their own cybersecurity vulnerabilities. In August 2021, the China Personal Information Protection Law was introduced. The personal information of acclaimed 1 billion people was deposited online in April 2021. So, if this was an inside job by the Chinese government, they sort of acted ahead of time to avoid both pieces of legislation. Is this advanced time frame a coincidence? According to Asia Markets, one user posted that 10 bitcoins is too cheap for government information. A fraudulent call can earn millions, not to mention that you risk being hunted and killed. Yes, the Chinese government's tactics are comparable to those of terrorist organizations. If an incident of this magnitude was committed by an individual or an organization with no government background, imagine how the CCP would treat it. Perhaps the magnitude of the 1 billion figure is so great that critics question its feasibility, asking who can actually access the data of 1 billion people from the Chinese police database. Who has the power to do it? Who has the guts to not fear the consequences? It is possible to draw a conclusion based on the available information, but this line of logic is a good one to follow. If this is the work of an insider in the top echelons of the CCP, then an impossible task can be achieved. Recent events in China have revealed many dots that could be linked together. 
To solve the mystery, it's often necessary to identify the motive of the perpetrator, finding out who the victims are and who is the beneficiary. In this case, it is Xi Jinping and his associates who have suffered the most damage to their reputations, especially Wang Xiaohang, the recently promoted public security minister. In China, the term sword hilt is synonymous with the Political and Legal Affairs Committee and the Ministry of Public Security, or the state apparatus machine for maintaining social stability. In the past, communist leaders have placed this sword hilt in the hands of those they trust most. On June 24th, Wang Xiaohong, a close associate of Xi Jinping, was suddenly appointed as China's Minister of Public Security and a member of the Communist Party Central Committee for Political and Legal Affairs. It is widely believed that this rapid promotion is Xi Jinping's plan to bring Wang Xiaohong into the CCP's top decision-making body Politburo at the 20th National Congress this fall. The Minister of Public Security before Wang was Zhao Keqi, who began his tenure in 2017 and belongs to neither the Jiang nor Xi factions. The four ministers of public security before Zhao all belonged to the Jiang faction and all had installed cronies in the Ministry of Public Security. Gang Dao An, the former vice mayor of Shanghai and head of the city's public security bureau, was one of them. When he was expelled from the party and public positions in February 2021, Gong was accused by authorities of causing serious political harm by engaging in collusion and clans and power and money deals within the Communist Party. Gong was arrested in March 2021 and pled guilty in September of the same year when he was tried for bribery. The leaked information came from Shanghai. Shanghai has long been the stronghold of the Jiang faction. In fact, the Jiang faction has another name, which is the Shanghai Gang. In terms of the timeline, the fall of Gong Dao An, the former director of the Shanghai Public Security Bureau, and the data leak of 1 billion people from the Shanghai Public Security Bureau almost coincide, with both coming in the first half of 2021. It's likely that there is a significant connection between these two events. The 20th Communist Party Congress this fall will determine whether Xi gets a third term in office, leaving little time for his political rivals, former party leader Jiang Zemin, and his partner Chen Qinghong's group to overthrow Xi Jinping. The leak of information on 1 billion Chinese would make Wang Xiaohong, the de facto leader of the Ministry of Public Security, look bad. As for Xi Jinping, who is behind Wang, he would lose even more face as the data of 1 billion Chinese would reveal the darkest insider secrets of the CCP's rule. For example, Xi has claimed that China has achieved the UN poverty reduction target 10 years ahead of schedule, that nearly 100 million impoverished people have been lifted out of poverty. This claim will easily be debunked in the face of real data, making him a laughingstock of the world. The zero-COVID policy led by Xi has already led to many terrible consequences and has given the Jiang faction a target to attack. If this leaked information can confirm the tragic consequences of the outbreak, including secondary disasters, then the Xi Jinping administration will face even greater pressure in the global political arena. Of course, what the public will not know is that Jiang's officials have used all sorts of tactics to manipulate the situation during the epidemic, and they have never really cared about people's lives. This is all speculation as a way of understanding the situation. It may be far from the truth, but it may also be very close. Leaking the personal information of 1 billion people would hurt such a large group, and from a national security perspective, it would also hurt the country deeply. But Jiang Zemin originally climbed to the pinnacle of power on the blood of college students in 1989. And if one were to tell this to the former party leader who actually ruled China for 23 years, he would probably respond like this. Uh,我给他谈一下风声。是说没起啊,要,那还是要提高自己的知识水平。那我这个,是这么写的啊,你们有一个好,全世界跑到什么地方你们比其他的西方知道,跑得还快。但是呢,问的问题的问题啊,都